We have the West semifinals game six. Nuggets now up 3-2 in the series, traveling to the Target Center in Minneapolis, Minnesota. It was a sight to behold what went down last night, watching Jokic go after Gobert, pick on Gobert, was very enjoyable. We are sitting here now with Denver still a road dog. We're sitting them at plus two. A minus 103. They opened up at Pinnacle plus two at minus 105. It didn't open up till Wednesday morning at 8.15 a.m. So this line at Pinnacle has only been available for about six hours. And it's moved very slightly towards Minnesota. We get into the cash flow for this one. We only have 1,655 tickets accounted for, but 75% of the tickets and 83% of the cash are on the Denver Nuggets. On the total here... 89% 89% of the tickets and 94% of the cash are on the over. Uh, 89 and 94. Let's see what's going on with the movement on the total. We have it sitting at 204 and a half. Opened up at 204, a half point move to the over. A BJ going back to the Timberwolves money line again. Uh, my dude says Nuggets win it all. Says uh, Gobert can't stop Jokic at all. And my dude says, how does he get defensive player of the year and look like such dog shit? He says, Joker made him a joke. I mean, I don't know if it's a joke here uh, because Jokic is, you know, best player in the league, a three-time most valuable player. He's very, very tough to stop. This series is being played at just a little over 92 possessions a game. And, you know, both these teams are playing around that number throughout the playoffs, so there's no, it's not playing into one team's uh, wheelhouse. The Denver Nuggets are shooting the ball spectacularly well in this series, 50% from the field and 42.1% from three. Uh, the Timberwolves are now just shooting just 35% from three. Jokic goes for 40 points and 13 assists. And then, of course, the number that we're all fascinated with, zero turnovers. 20 of his points came against Rudy Gobert. He went 8 of 9 from the field against him. He did anything he wanted. Got anything he wanted. For the third straight game, all wins. The Nuggets shot over 50% from the floor, over 40% from three. Remember, in game two, the Nuggets were held to 34.9 from the field and 30% from three. Uh, And Edwards picked up just 18 points on Tuesday. We saw the difficulty of his scores without Conley on the floor. Right. Uh, Conley is not an electric player, but clearly he opens things up for Ant and gets Ant in good situations. Uh, is this enough time for Conley to play with a sore Achilles? I don't think it is. It sucks for the Wolves because Nikhil Alexander-Walker looks so good coming off the bench. But if you need him to play 39 minutes, it's a problem. It's a problem. He's just he's just not meant for that right now. So the Denver Nuggets have been winning these games comfortably without Michael Porter Jr. helping. Right. Uh, ineffective. Uh, four points in game four, six points in game five, which tells you that the Nuggets are the real deal. Mm-hmm. Take it away for us, Dutch. Game six of the West semifinals. Yeah, that's what's scary about the Nuggets, man. Is Michael Porter Jr. has been MIA this <laughs> this uh, this series, and <laughs> Aaron Gordon been the second best player on the team. Jamal Murray ain't even been that good. I mean, now we've seen a better version of him, but Aaron Gordon's been the second best player on this basketball team. Um, you know, Caldwell pulled this show up last game. Uh, you know, but it's it's unbelievable what what we're seeing out of the Nuggets when your your stud, you know, guard who just hit two game winners in the series before against the Lakers really been kind of struggling Uh shout out to the Minnesota defense. Um, and, and, you know, haven't really been getting much from, uh, from any of the role players outside of Aaron Gordon, who's just, you know, really looked like he, another level. And uh, obviously you, you touched on Joker. He's on a whole motherfucking another level, what he's doing in Minnesota. Uh, Minnesota is a little fat and happy, man. They were, they're feeling themselves a little bit after going six and zero in the playoffs, sweeping, Phoenix and then handling Denver 2-0 in Denver, which still will be one of the more shocking losses. You know, I don't want to say shocking losses, but one of the ones I took it on the chin that 
I still can't really, you know, when you can kind of explain your L's, they're, 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 they're a lot easier to digest. But I still don't understand that game, too, in Denver. Like, that, that that game to me was just unbelievable the way they didn't show up there. But they got shit. Mike Malone got the crew ready to rock and roll, traveled to Minnesota, and since then they've handled business. But I also believe the chip that the Wolves were playing with may, might have, might have, you know, might have went a little light after those six, after beating Denver like that 2-0. They might have got a little fat and happy. Um, but this game to me, Jim, I do believe this series is over, but I don't know if it's going to be over in game six. Denver's not losing to Minnesota in the, in this series, but I'm going to pay attention to the line. And I think the line will tell us everything we need to know in this basketball game. Um, I do think that I do think Minnesota, um, you know, you, you listen to, and after the, after the, um, after the game in the press conference, man, he was just patting Joker on the back. It looked like he was defeated. But it's one game. He gets back to practice. They're going to refresh. And I do believe they'll show up. Now, I would like to see Conley out there. Obviously, that does put Alexander Walker back to where he needs to be on the bench. And Conley, say what you will about him, but he's he's a point guard. He's a leader of the team. You've seen him on the bench. You've seen what he was trying to do, keep the team involved. It didn't help because Joker's just that damn good. Um, but I'm hoping that I see this line drop. Honestly, um, I, and um, into Denver's and, and, and people be betting Denver, everyone in the chat already, it seems. And I just know this is what it's going to be, Denver, Denver, Denver. So I'm right where BJ's at as long as the line tells me that, you know, I, I'll, I'll probably go to the window with Minnesota here because uh, the NBA don't give away free motherfucking money. And and everybody's going to act like this is going to be free money with Denver. Now, if this line moves to two and a half or three, I might pump my brakes a little bit. But I don't see that happening. I see it going probably more towards a one and um, get a better number um, on Minnesota. And I will be on Minnesota here. But I do believe the series is over game seven in Denver. Minnesota does not stand a chance. Uh, but I just believe the world will be on Denver in game six, and that's the NBA for you. So it'll be Minnesota or nothing for me in game six. I'm hesitant to back Denver here, and I certainly don't want to fade them. Yeah, it's tough, but it's like if the line tells you, you kind of, it's like throw, you kind of got to throw a unit on it because it, it, it's been <laughs> it's been pretty good, you know, um, outside of the other night. Outside of the other night, it, it just it didn't make sense to me. But yeah, that that's that's my read on this game, Jim. It's it's definitely scary to fade Denver because I I do think they're clearly better than Minnesota. But they lose this game, and then and what do they do? They go back home for Game Seven, and it's still you know, and it could be you know writing on the wall for these boys. So very very interesting. And my apologies, uh, Cody. Horse races here. We're moving to Thursday and Friday because Thursdays we have the short MLB card. So horse races from now on are Thursdays and Fridays. Fifty dollars up for grabs Thursdays and Fridays. Let's talk a little bit about this total. I, I think we can assume that Minnesota is going that ant. And some of these guys are going to hit their shots, but can can they get reasonable open looks with Nikhil Alexander Walker playing the point? Because if they can't, we know that the defense is going to be heightened. If we can't, do we look for an under here in this one? Because this total has yet to move, and eighty nine percent of tickets, ninety four percent of cash is on the under. Now we have. 32 hours, you know, 30 hours before this game pops off. But I have a lean towards the under. We know that that Gobert will be better defensively. He'll be thinking, you know, he'll, he'll be thinking of all the mistakes he made guarding Jokic. He knows Jokic can go after him again. We know that Ant's going to step up, but he's not going to have easy looks because he's not going to have a point guard setting him up. And Nikhil Alexander has length, can defend the perimeter. Do you have interest uh, in the under at all? And if you had a free $500 bet on the total at 204.5, would you move on the over or the under? Yeah, it seems awfully low. It does seem pretty low, Jim. Um, I would only look under. This, going, this is, I mean, this is where Minnesota, if they have any chance, they have to just bite down on the defensive end. I mean, we've seen them look elite defensively. Um, Rudy Gobert name i mean he's literally like a walking meme right now i mean you heard what draymond was saying about him we 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 it's it's you motherfucker <laughs> uh actually 
one of Draymond's highlights of his career for me. That was actually pretty funny. But uh, outside of that, yeah, I think uh, I think I would be on the under here, Jim. I, I'm on under unless it's the Indiana Pacers. You talking playoff basketball? I gotta look towards the under. Um, I think the under in the game tonight is is also appealing tonight. We didn't talk about that too much, but I do think Dallas and OKC. It's been I, I like the under there. There have been some points been scored in you know at times, but overall, watching those two teams play, I, I definitely lean to the under in that game as well. But yeah, under in these two. I think that will be my only bet in game six will be the under. I am going to wait, though. I do want to watch this market mature and materialize. I do not think that 95% of the cash will be on the over. And if Conley's not there, I will be betting the under here. Uh, We heard from the BJ's already hammered the Pacers in game six. We will talk about uh, Thursday and Friday action on tomorrow's show. But here we have Dutch planning on a move on the Minnesota Timberwolves. Do you want to make the Timberwolves official right now here with the line? Uh, I'll tweet it out. I'm going to let the line kind of determine this one for me, Jim. And so are you looking for it to move towards the Denver Nuggets? Exactly. So you're thinking that you could get even a pick? I'll get a better line on Minnesota because every and I want to make sure that what I'm thinking is going to happen is the whole world is going to be on Denver tomorrow night. Because I don't really want to step in front of these boys. But if that's the case, and this line goes from two to even more appealing to where everyone's just on the nuggets, I know Minnesota's going to be live to win that game. So, I mean, it's not it's not all she wrote for, for Denver. They go right back home, as I mentioned. So, um, I'll, I'll definitely be paying attention. I'm, I'm worried about tonight's games. And then as soon as I look into the line moving from there, um, I'll, I'll tag you if I'm on Minnesota tomorrow night. Beautiful. And I plan on being on the under. And I'll be watching it very closely. But I do. I'm going to be on the under on top of Operation Garcia, which we need unders for these player props to all go under. But I'm going to be on the uh, under. DC Capper says total flies over. You're in good company, DC. 9.5 of every $10 is on your over. So you're, uh, you're with the public in a warm bath, in a bathhouse even. In a bathhouse with all the public. That's very good. I just got a, I just got a couple hoes over here. Don't mind us. We're going to be on the under. That's our breakdown here. Game six, Nuggets, Minnesota Timberwolves. Dutch, excellent work, my man. Thank you for rocking with us. Please support Dutch on X at Dutch Boy Fresh. And, of course, he's one of the stars of Medicaid Mondays. Please support that as well.